Hi, I'm Kevin Eikenberry, and I'm here to help you reach your potential as a leader and a human being. Welcome to Remarkable TV. Today, I have, I'm answering a question from a viewer just like you about multitasking. Are you ready? Let's get started. So our video today is, is, comes to answer the question Christina asked me recently, and here's Christina's question. Uh, Kevin, can you give us some tips on how you can manage information overload from emails, articles, press, social media, et cetera, et cetera, and how to multitask effectively? Well, Christina, I can't answer all of that in one episode. That's a lot of stuff, but I can give you two or three really good, important ideas quickly. And let's start with the last thing first about multitasking. How well do you think you can multitask? Well, you're wrong. Did you know that the research says that we actually cannot multitask? That what our brains cannot do is dual process. Instead, what we do is we switch back and forth so quickly that it feels like we're doing two things at once. So when I'm on the couch and telling, reading the iPad and my wife's in the other room and she says, why aren't you listening to me? And I say, I am, while I'm also reading my iPad. Uh, what I'm not doing is listening and reading both. I'm reading, listening, reading, listening, going back and forth, just like you do when you drive your car every day. You drive your car, you get the radio on, right? And you're driving along with the radio on, and then all of a sudden, it there's a massive traffic backup, or it starts to rain or snow really hard. And in the moment when you have to really focus on the road, what do you do with the radio? You turn it down. Why? Because your brain knows, in the end, can't do both. Research tells us we can do, at best, we can do two things simultaneously at about 70%, as well as we could do either one of them separately. So I'm here to tell you, Christina, and everybody else can't really multitask. So what we really need to do is think about how do we want to spend our time, and it may not be in multitasking. Now, the second part of your question was about the information overload piece. So let me give you three pieces of advice about that. Number one, I want you to think, consider going on an information diet. Maybe you've got too many websites, too many articles, too many videos, too much social media, all, except for this video, of course. But my point is this, go on an information diet. You probably got too much of it. The overload starts to go away when you get a little more clear about what you want on it. And secondly, go on the healthy diet, and then secondly, eat more healthy, which means the stuff that you do choose to consume Make sure it's stuff that supports your goals and where you want to go. That's why, of course, you want to continue to watch Remarkable TV. But in all seriousness, pick this. Maybe there's social media. You can just say, it's time for me to let that go. Or I let that go till the weekend or whatever. The point is, make a conscious choice rather than saying, i got to take all this stuff. So we go on a... We, we, go on a healthy information diet. We get healthier in choices about what we make about that diet. And then lastly, when we do those first two things, maybe we won't be quite so inclined to try to multitask, right? Listen to our colleague while we're reading the blog post. Maybe we won't do quite as much of that. And all of that, of course, leads to today's tweet. Deal with information overload by reducing the overload. Consume less and consume more wisely based on your goals. So Christina asked two important questions for leaders. Like, I got a lot to do and how do I deal with it? And for us as leaders, that's especially important because we're not just doing, our, we're not just doing work, we're leading too. And so not only because we have so much to do, do we need to get more productive, but recognize that when we're less than productive, we're impacting our team and we're teaching them how to work based on them watching us. So us getting more productive not only helps us, it helps the rest of our team too. And you know, that's why I, a while back, did a tele designed and delivered a teleseminar called The Productive Leader. In this 60-minute session, I outlined a number of tools and approaches and techniques to help leaders manage their time more effectively, make better choices with their time, and understand the nature of what we call choice management and not just time management. 
that's intriguing to you, if you'd like to become a more productive leader, you can get a recording of that session, a recording of the live session, and a copy of the handouts as well. And you can get all of that and learn more details about that session by filling or by clicking on the link below. And I hope you'll do exactly that. Until the next time, I hope you have a productive day, and I hope that you continue to remember that you are remarkable.